Hello and welcome back. I am Abha Anindita and this is an exclusive episode of Odessa Links. With all the hype around Comet Neowise that was discovered earlier this year, not many of us are aware of the other magical and celestial phenomenon in the sky. If you are a sky gazer and love figuring out stars and other celestial objects in the sky, 2020 is a good year for sky gazers. You need not be disappointed because there are many other things coming up this year. Therefore, we got into a conversation with an astrophysicist and science communicator to ask her about the upcoming celestial phenomenon. She is Dr. Prashati Patel. She also cleared the basic doubts regarding meteors, asteroids, comets and the upcoming meteor showers. Yes, what are meteor showers and let's know more about them. Let's hear what she has to say. Hello ma'am, welcome to Odessa Links. Thank you for having me. Since how many years have you been dedicatedly you know, researching in, in this field? Yeah, so um, I actually came to Canada in 2006, so ever since then I've been involved in um, astronomy. You know, I studied astronomy for 10 years and, and now I work in that field. So it has been, you know, uh, around 14 years, you know, um, to be doing that. Right now. Ma'am, so like Neowise has already been fading. What what are the chances that maybe, you know, another next few years or possibly in this like lifetime for us, like when will be the next bright comet? Is it predictable or is it not? Generally, they say that every, you know, couple of decades, you should be able to see something that is very bright. Um, yeah. And so, you know, like Hale Bob in the late 90s and now this is in like, you know, almost 2020. So, um, it, it's it's kind of predictable that maybe in two decades or so we'll be seeing it will be seeing another one of these. Uh, however, it's important to note that you know generally comets are very unpredictable because you know when they get close to the sun they can break apart. So you know we were expecting just like other comets we have earlier in 2020 um, expected them to be like a really good show, but they ended up breaking up near the sun and we didn't see anything out of them uh, once they passed the sun. So. Very unpredictable, and something very unique about Neowise is that it was only discovered in March. Right. So you know we haven't had much time, and so we cannot really say when a discovery like that would happen again. We would find something that would be as spectacular or even better than Neowise. Uh, there's news that meteor showers are going to happen. Um, what, mom? What for? For the viewers, what exactly are? meteor showers and where, where can we expect to see them? Will it be visible in, in India? Yeah, so um, of course these meteor showers are some of the most uh, spectacular ones that you can see and especially a good one because you know, it's, it's time of the year and it's not really cold so you can actually go out and see it right. um, and they generally uh, put up a really good show so you can see anywhere from you know 80 to around 120 meters per hour which is great if you are um, in a dark sky area away from the city lights, then you know, you'll be able to see that many meteors. Um, we, we should be able to see it in the northern hemisphere very easily, all of these meteors. Um, people just have to keep in mind that um, they actually peak uh, uh, around August 12th and 13th. Right. It doesn't mean that you won't be able to see them now. Even a couple of, you know, a week ago when I actually went to see the, the galaxy and the comet, I was able to even spot, like, you know, 10 meteors just that night. Uh, so they already started. It's just that, you know, you need to get out of the city in dark skies, uh, kind of stay there for at least an hour to make sure that your eyes get actually accustomed to the darkness, and then you'll be able to spot them really well. Right, right, ma'am. Ma'am, but then what, what are the expectations if people can see it in India or not? So yeah, they should be able to see it in India. As long as there's clear skies, they require to have clear skies. You could have some, um, you know, clouds in the sky, which is okay. Um, but some, to see all of them, you would require definitely, um, you know, clear skies. Um, these are just, you know, small dust particles that are going through the atmosphere. Sometimes they are bigger. And that's when we see really, really big fireballs, as we call them. Um, those you can see it even when it's cloudy. They'll come through the clouds and you'll be able to see them. But most of them contain a very, very small dust from from another comet called Swiss Turtle. 
And, um, you know, that dust is very tiny, so most of them would be very small. So if it's cloudy, um, then it's, it's not a good time to kind of go out and try, but if it's clear, definitely would be very easy to spot at least, uh, you know, 25 to 50 just as you're just sitting out on your chair, you should be able to spot them. Right, right. Now, meteor shower happens almost every year, right? Yes, the Persian meteor shower basically peaks uh, every year between end of July and end of August. And that's because Earth is actually passing through the, the dust that Comet Swift mm -hmm. actually left in its path around the sun. Um, and it's actually a short period comet. It comes around every 130 uh, years. And mm -hmm. so it's, it's not that far off. Uh, it was, you know, close to Earth. Um, in, in early 90s, so you know, it won't come back for at least our lifetime or our generation, um, but it has left the dust that Earth passes every every uh, July and August, so we're able to see the, uh, the meteor shower every year. Right. Um, also, one question I have been meaning to ask you, like they seem to get confused between what is a comet, what is a meteor and what is an asteroid. Ma'am, so for like for a simple language, if you could explain what, what, what basically is the difference? Yeah, so an asteroid or a meteoroid, they are kind of the similar thing, different sizes. The asteroid is big, rock, rocky body that right. generally found between, um, you know, Mars and Jupiter. Um, and, you know, there are some that live close to Earth as well. But right. if they're very small in size, just the rocky bodies, we call them meteoroids. Right. Um, and when they go through the night sky or they go through our atmosphere and burn up, um, then we call them a meteor, which is a scientific name, but you know, generally people know them by shooting stars. That's what people call them. Um, so they are meteors. They are basically burning up in the uh, in the sky, and that could be rock, that could be dust. Uh, you know, different objects will create obviously different intensity of light that you see. And then the comets are basically, they are like asteroids, but they aren't really built in the solar system. They actually live further away beyond Neptune. So they're actually made of dust and ice, you know, rocky body mixed with ice. Um, so they're almost like a dirty snowball. You have you have a rocky asteroid almost mixed with the snow, you know, in some ways right. you want to kind of find an analogy. Right. Um, and so what really happens is when they come close to the sun, those ices and those frozen gases actually start to burn. That's why we see that lovely tail um, that is not more visible to the naked eye for comet nearby. Um, and, you know, generally you don't see that for an asteroid. If an asteroid come in, come in, coming through the atmosphere is burning and it will be all red mm -hmm. and it will be very different from what a comet would look like. Um, and so, you know, that's kind of the distinction between an asteroid, meteoroid, meteor, or shooting star, as people like to call it in a comet. Right, ma'am, right. Ma'am, so we'll, we'll wrap, wrap it up with the last question. Ma'am, what do you think, like, uh, is the scope of astrophysics or astronomy in India? Yeah, there is, you know, um, I left India, uh, you know, quite a while ago, but I've always keep in you know, touch with what is happening and, you know, work with a lot of, uh, you know, organizations and astronomers. Um, and there's a huge scope. We, and yeah, have been doing you know, a lot more than what they were doing 20, 30 years ago in, in the field of astrophysics especially. We have, you know, a tons of new observatories. We have tons of new projects that are coming up, like so the LIGO India project. We have the Astrosat mission that is going on right now. We have the Alice mission that is planned for the sun. You know, we have already had Mongolian and Sundayan. So we're right. doing tons more stuff right now. And so people who really want to study uh, not only the stars and the galaxies, but also planets in our solar system. Um, you know, it's, it's a great time to be involved in, in such a uh, such an amazing field that you know brings you out of your comfort zone in, on Earth and into space. Right, ma'am. Right, right. Thank you, ma'am. It was wonderful having you here at Rudisa Links. Thank you for having me. Good night, ma'am. Yeah, take care. Good, good morning to you guys. <laughs> you too. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Yeah, take care. Bye.